Hello, I am Manuel Leon and I'm from the University of Southampton and one of the investigators of the Bridges project. In this session, we are going to cover interactive learning. So in this, this video is uh, divided into three parts. Uh, the first part is about concepts rational, so the reason why, and theories of interactive learning. Then we will explore it in the classroom, how, what are the main strategies uh, in the classroom. And then we will see how interactive learning takes place and how we can um, enact it in distance and online education. So um, the, about the concepts and the rational and theories, we are going to divide this subsection in three more subsections, which is uh, a definition of interactive learning, interactive learning, the opportunities and challenges. Okay, so what is, uh, so what, what, what are the difficulties, but also what are the, what can we, uh, can we harness from interactive learning approaches? And then we will cover a little bit all those theories that are uh, behind interactive learning. Okay, so interactive learning, uh, what is it? Well, it's a method that keeps students actively engaged. So it's as simple as that. It's also a technique in which students interact with several things. So they interact with the instructor, they interact with other students, and they also interact with the interactive technologies that we put in place both in the classroom and, on and online. Or even better, they interact with all things together, okay? And uh, that's, um, that's uh, considered as an alternative to the sage on the stage model where the lecturer talks and the students just listen. So there is more to it. There, is, uh, there, is, there are many more things. There are uh, opportunities and challenges about interactive learning and we are going to have a look at them in this, um, in this session. So uh, what are the main opportunities? Well. The main opportunities are that interactive uh, learning takes place when combining learning actions. So lectures on their own in which the lecturer speaks and the students listen might not be enough. OK, so um, the, this combination of activities, it can make learning take uh, take place more effectively. OK, students also benefit from social interaction, both at well-being and competence levels. What does it mean? That the, uh, that the learning experience in an interactive learning session um, might be uh, much more fruitful, much more effective and also more pleasant. Okay. And finally, the opportunities that interactive learning offers is that it enhances students critical thinking okay it's uh, it provides so many opportunities to develop this so important competence in higher education and actually in all education stages so um, um, what are the theories uh, behind uh, uh, interactive learning we are going to be covering them here very briefly well, uh, behaviorism and cognitivism, uh, constructivism and connectivism. If you want a little bit more of a deeper analysis of the theories uh, behind uh, of the learning theories, uh, you can uh, follow this link of Nick Fair's uh, learning uh, theories uh, summary. Okay, so um, let's start with. Uh, with cognitivism and behaviorism. So uh, they are two slightly different theories, but they have so many, so many points in common. And one of them is that, according to this theory, uh, knowledge is built inside our brain. So learning takes place inside our brain as well. So uh, if we are going to uh, design interactive activities uh, based on this theory, so uh, we stimulate. We we design them to stimulate internal mental mental processes that lead 
to learning. Okay. Uh, examples of that, well, completing quizzes, for example, uh, completing these mix and match activities, uh, blank filling, sorting, all those activities that you can prepare in a virtual learning environment, okay? And um, the student um, uh, does it in a progressive way so that they're, uh, they're mostly by, or in many occasions by trial and error, they uh, the student, they end up learning because something has changed inside, inside their brain, okay? Then there is constructivism. It's a more social theory where, um, where it is argued that learning is built when interacting with others, okay? So the interactive activities that you would uh, uh, design under a uh, constructivism theory um, would be um, to stimulate conversation and collaboration, okay? Examples of that, well, uh, you can, um, we can uh, um, uh, design discussion forums, group, assessment, as a, uh, group assignments, peer assessment activities, etc. So all those activities in which students talk to each other talk to the teacher and there's conversation going on, okay? Finally, um, we would like to mention the connectivist theory as well. Some people argue that it's not a theory or some, or some other people argue that it's a derivation of other theories. But uh, in any case, in connectivism, learning is built when making connections in a network of people and content and services, okay? Interactive, lear interactive activities are designed to stimulate networked learning, okay? So you design activities in which um, students harness the power of the networks, of the social media where, where they interact, or of anything else. And then uh, an example of this would be, for example, you get uh, students to produce a digital artifact and then share it in social media, comment about it, and getting the students to comment about other students' digital artifacts that they have created. So this, this connected uh, uh, activity is what would stimulate uh, uh, that learning would take place. Okay? Now, you can... Uh, we can um, we have strategies both within and outside the classroom. Okay, so uh, interactive learning within the classroom. Yes, so um, you can uh, uh, connect students with one another early in the module. Yeah, with for example icebreakers in chats, forums, etc. Which means before the classroom starts before the face-to-face -face sessions start, you uh, get students to know each other outside the classroom before that, okay? So that when they come into the classroom, they are already uh, re ready to interact with other students, yeah? You, uh, you also uh, are advised to design group-based collaborative activities, including assessments. Maybe not summative assessments, of course, but yes, formative assessments. What is the difference? Well, in formative assessments, mainly it's uh, the the uh, the grade that it's uh, that 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 the that students get. They don't count towards the final mark of the module. Yeah. And it's much more based on feedback, yeah? So, in provision of feedback, receiving feedback, and very importantly, produce feedback. So, students producing feedback about the, uh, pro the production of other students, it's always a good idea. It's a very good exercise to do, yeah? And uh, a very important uh, strategy is that the, uh, the, the instructor should should manage the group formation so that the groups are made in such a way that this, uh, the collaboration is maximized, which means you may want to take uh, into account the different features or the different 
personalities or the different uh, or, or the different approaches to learning that different students have within the classroom. Okay. More strategies would be uh, including activities using student response systems. And that is, uh, and yeah, do that where possible. Student response systems are those systems, there are many, um, uh, there are many out there in which um, you prompt a question and students with their own devices in the classroom, they can respond. And then you can have a, an overview of how the students in the classroom have responded to that. Um, in, this, uh, in, in this course, there will be also uh, very many recommendations on uh, student response systems. Yes, there will be lists and uh, the, the features of those, uh, of those uh, systems and recommendations for their use. Okay? You also uh, want to set tasks that require online interaction, but both in class and outside. Okay, so make them um, make them uh, synchronous when you are face to face when when the session when the session uh, is is taking place. But do follow ups. Okay, uh, as in once they are outside the classroom, set tasks that students can do at their own time when they when, when at their best convenience yes and with the devices that they that they uh, consider so make them uh, make them uh, make those um, activities uh, available for different kinds of devices you know mobile uh, pc tablet etc things that can be done in different places with different devices yes and uh, also make sure that the in-class technology um, enhanced activities are accessible and optional as well. So this means um, accessibility is key to this. You, uh, we need to consider that not everyone can use the devices and the services and the software in the same way. So it has to be easy for everyone. Yes, uh, and accessible for everyone. But also, it's important that they are optional because even if we have made them accessible, the, uh, some students, some participants may still not be able or not willing to, um, to, to, to engage in those activities. So uh, making them compulsory could leave some students behind. Okay, so that's... That's important. And strat strategies specific to distance learning, yes, is that uh, for making it more interactive, you may want to release the content gradually in bite-sized, small doses, so that students can absorb it at, or, or can manage it better and can interact with the uh, with the content and the activities in such a way that they either not feel too overwhelmed or either don't see everything that is going on in the course from day one and then they may lose interest or they may lose uh, kind of uh, their own uh, self-management strategies, okay? So um, you also want to minimize synchronous activities and maximize asynchronous activities, which means, yes, you can have, you can, uh, you can prepare activities that take place all at the same time. Everyone does it, for example, in a in a live chat, live conversations, all at the oh, in a set time. They they have a start, they have a finish, but it is uh, a it's fine, it's fine to have those, but you may not want to abuse them. And it's better to use more asynchronous activities where all students can do, can, uh, can engage in those activities, in those interactive activities in their own time at their own pace, okay? And then, um, and finally, you also may want to facilitate uh, collaborative and group activities, including response assignments, which is um, 
uh, activities where uh, students help each other or mark each other. Yeah, that, and that is the uh, the response assignments, as in um, a student prepares an assignment, they get feedback, perhaps from another student, and then this, uh, once they have received that feedback, there is an opportunity to respond to that feedback and have a conversation going on. So this is very conversational and therefore very interactive. Yes. So the main takeaways of this session is that there are three types of interaction. Uh, students can interact with the teacher. Yeah, they can interact with the content and they can interact with peers. A good balance of these interactions is the key to a successful learning experience. Also, awareness of learning theories, yes, can help plan lessons and activities. So have a look at the theories. Uh, have a have a good read who who has written about the uh, about behaviorism, uh, constructivism, connectivism, etc. Yes, and that is very helpful to. To, to prepare those activities. So a little bit of um, a little bit of theoretical background is always useful. And finally, it is uh, it is also very wise to adapt interactive activities to the mode of delivery, whether online or face to face to face. So when you are preparing a lesson, it is not the same to prepare it in a in a face-to-face -face session within the classroom, in the in in the faculty, in the uh, in the in the premises of the university, but uh, uh, it's not the same as prepar preparing them for being carried out online and at distance. So have always in mind the design of your sessions and even your courses, uh, taking into account those two different ways of delivering um, education. So that's all for now. Thank you for listening and bye-bye. Um,